Okay. If you keep going to the deeper observer of all things that have been tracked, so if you go to the observer of time, then time doesn't exist. If you go to the observer of perception, then the perception of this world doesn't exist. So if you keep going to the observer of everything, the things that are completely are observed without identification disappear. So it's like identification has to occur with time for time to exist. Identification has to occur with the body for the body to exist. Identification has to um, occur with colours for colours to exist. Otherwise they just disappear. If there's objects or in consciousness certain things are recognised, if they're no longer recognised they cease to exist. So in the pure consciousness there, there is no this and that happening. And this is actually a spiritual revelation. So for things to happen, there has to be um, identification. And, if, and you see, see this in your own practice of the observer. If you go to the observer of sound, and the observer, detached observer of sound, sound ceases to exist. No sound is existing in this moment. In fact, everywhere you go, there is no sound. Uh, and if you go to the observer of your thoughts, thoughts cease to exist. If you go to the observer of the body, body exists. If you go to that which is, which is interested in perception, perception ceases, or the, whichever sense it is, ceases. So we can talk about going back into the light, um, uh, out, of, out of which it seems dualistic perception originates. Um, and then you can see how the world starts to exist, and how the world can cease to exist, how time and space and uh, separation uh, are emerging. And you, do, you, you start to recognize this through your own spiritual experience. This is not like me trying to tell you some, you know, give you some theory. Uh, just you do, you do your observer. <clears throat> You'll find that as you do the observer, things that used to be registered cease to, when you transcend something, it ceases to be registered. Um, <clears throat> you can do this, like if someone's a donut addict, or if someone is, um, I don't know, if someone had a, uh, what, what do people get addicted to? Uh, could, you know, some people could be addicted to coffee mugs. I don't think many people are addicted to coffee mugs. Um, there, there's, all these people collect things, don't they? Gadgets, like Star Wars toys, you know, or dolls, Barbie dolls, or mm. handbags. I don't know. Mm. What do people collect? So, I don't know, Michael calls handbags. So, it's <laughs> like... Like, you know, if you put a Michael Kors handbag on the middle of the table, it's like someone can't not notice it. And you could, like, <laughs> and you could make that your mission in life to transcend Michael Kors handbags. <laughs> this is the type of thing I, I'm doing on a serious note. <clears throat> it's like, you know, and, and someone might go belief, but I could never transcend Michael Kors handbags because if there was a Michael Kors handbag, I'd have to notice it. But that's, that's a belief system that you have to notice a Michael Kors handbag. It's like something's registering, looking out for a Michael Kors handbag. So you can transcend that, and you know you've transcended it because someone can bring in a Michael Kors handbag and then you, you wouldn't know it. And then someone might say to you, like, do you remember the Michael Kors handbag that that woman brought in? And you go, what Michael Kors handbag? Because you've been in the room and hadn't registered that that was there. And that's what's called transcending. It's like something, is, it's meaningful, <coughs> And this is the thing, like some people would say, no, it's impossible to transcend Michael Kors handbags. If there was a Michael Kors handbag, I would register it. It's impossible to get to that level of enlightenment. <coughs> and then you'd have to say, no, it is possible. You know, that's a belief system that you could never, ever be free of tracking Michael Kors handbags. And that's true for any, anything. Thoughts, bodies, perception. And when you disappear one thing, then you know the power of consciousness can disappear anything. You know, there is no such thing as something that's more powerful, that is so powerful that it always has to be registered. This is the way you, tra you transcend, you know, that's why I like the word transcend. Uh, I don't like limiting beliefs, like I could never be free of noticing Michael Kors' hands back. That would be a limiting belief. So, I don't know why I was talking about that. I've forgotten what even the original question. Oh, yes, yes, going in. It is relevant to the reason. So, it, it's relevant. Oh yes, I, I remember now, I was talking about disappearing people. Yeah, disappearing people. So th this is a conversation on disappearing because it's like when, you, it's like the consciousness becomes better and better. The more you can do this type of stuff, it's like you can just switch off people. 
-hmm. you know in the beginning it seems too hard mm -hmm. but once you start to once you get some experience that no I can just disappear a person being in the room you know and then it seems to sometimes it might work and then you know consciousness has the capacity to not notice a person uh, and it's a spiritual experience it's, it's not like um, and if there's any form of repression or anything that seems uncomfortable well you can uh, you just observe that and then eventually it becomes more freer that you can disappear people so sometimes that's another thing uh, that uh, you can do so consciousness and I remember Hawkins talking about this it was really interesting and this also helped even though I'm a hypnotherapist and I could see from consciousness point of view the power of beliefs and the power of collective beliefs that we all believe but they're just beliefs you know science and all that thing and Hawkins said this thing and I thought it was so amazing uh, and he said that, you know, like um, morphine, it was very interesting, morphine. Well, morphine is a belief. It's a belief. There is no power in morphine. That's a belief system. So if, if, if you know, we give you this injection of morphine and you'll conk out, not, is it morphine? What did they get? I've forgotten the name of it that they knock you out. Anyway, so, um, <clears throat> but that's not, a, that. Morphine has no power in it. It's an effect of consciousness. So anything that can be done, that we have given power to, I mean, the Course talks about magic, magical, magical stuff, and this would be on the theme of magic, magic ascribing magic to things in, in the world. That's actually, at, at the level of absolute truth, what the Course says is absolutely true. I mean, I don't want to go into the discussion. We could go, yes, you should take, you know, if you've got a headache, you can take a headache pill. I mean, that's not what I'm talking about here. But actually, anything, when we take a pill for something, actually, God can do that. It's not the pill that does that, it's God. It's our belief in it that means that it happens. So you can actually do that. Whatever we've ascribed value to, like this is a headache pill and this is a, this is morphine injection, <clears throat> which is, I'm going to give you a morphine jet, it's going to knock you out, so you won't feel a thing. You know, that, that, those are all belief systems. And you can actually do that through consciousness without the morphine. And hence, you know, that's what Hawkins did. You know, so it's like, you know, they're going to cut. They're going to cut you thing. You've just chopped your finger off. You tell the doctor, uh, I, you know, don't worry about the painkillers, the morphine, or knocking me out. And he went into a state of bliss. So it's to know it's this thing of ascribing power to, to the world. It's, it's just, you know, this thing of nothing, there is nothing in this world that has power to affect one, which is something very, very powerful, you know. Uh, most of us suffer, our, not just our belief system, my belief systems, but our collective belief systems. We have so many collective belief systems, um, you know, especially science, tablets, medicines, the body, aging, uh, all kinds of things which are just all kinds. Um, one of my favorite lessons, my, I'd love, uh, there's one of this thing where the course lesson goes on, I think people will know it, I think it's 107. It's one of my favorite lessons because it goes like, you think a body next to you <coughs> gives you company or something like that, or you think if we put an injection in you that will cure you, or if you think little green pieces of paper are sort of like giving you financial security, it says it's all rubbish in this, I love that lesson. I'm sure everyone who's a firm course student knows what I'm talking about. And it just like savaged every single collective belief system as being uh, the medical system crap. You need you need a relationship crap. Uh, you need money crap. You know, <laughs> it's basically what it said in one lesson. Uh, people are not saying like burn your money and sort of like let go of your relationships, but it is on a, on a, on an absolute level that is true. It's, it's the divine that gives, you, gives security. It's the divine that keeps you company. Uh, but these are different levels of consciousness. doesn't mean you can't enjoy your donuts or whatever it is, uh, if that's what you want. So, um, so, those, you, so you employ the tools which are right. I was going to say, sorry, I'm waffling on this one, but I intuitively use the tool I feel drawn to when I'm in a difficult situation. And it's not always the same tool. You know, if heavy feelings, I might do feel the feelings, um, uh, or I might pray for a miracle to see them differently, or I might do the observer. And there's different, so I'm intuitively drawn to which one I'll use. Sometimes I'll use, 
I could use Field of Feelings to soften it up a bit and then do the Observer. Or I can interchange between all of them intuitively. So it's not necessarily, this is guaranteed, you have to do this one. You just do the one that uh, you need. And also I do the thing, yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll stop there. <laughs>